The hunt for the next professional MasterChef champion continues. And these six chefs all believe they have what it takes to win the title. Now, they face two challenges set by judge Greg Wallace and two of Britain's best chefs, Monica Galletti and Michelin star Marcus Waring. I'm really competitive. I don't want to go home. Um, I'm going to go in all guns blazing and try and get through to the next stage. I am really excited to be in this competition and uh, I hope I can make myself proud. Our chefs have got to be at the top of their game. They need to be focused. They need to want this more than anything. It's going to be a roller coaster ride, but it's going to be one they will never, ever forget. Marcus, what are you going to get your chefs to do? I'm going to ask my chefs to cook a buck rabbit. It's a Welsh rabbit with a fried egg. Is that a commonly known thing or is that a Marcus invention? No, it's a classic. Do you know a buck rabbit? I've not had a buck rabbit in a long time. Can you show me how to do it? Mm, OK. I'm going to take our loaf of bread. I'm using a sourdough. I'll take a good virgin olive oil. A head of garlic. I'm just going to put the bread onto the griddle pan. So when we're making a classic roux sauce, the milk has to be up to temperature. It just helps it all work and come together much quicker. Equal quantities of butter to flour, and you start to melt that. And then we drop in the flour. And we slowly start to add our warm milk. I don't know about you, Monica, but this is one of the first things I learned. Yeah. It's one of your basic sources, you know, and so they've got to know if that flour and butter is not cooked out before the milk goes in, it will be lumpy. I'd be amazed if they don't know how to do this. They may just sprinkle the cheese on the top. No. 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 You don't think so? No. All right, let's see. Now it starts to come together as a lump. You just keep cooking and adding. Now you see it's starting to turn into a sauce now. What I am looking for is the chef that then tastes to see whether the flour's cooked. Mm, it's beautifully smooth. It needs seasoning. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now we're going to put it into our cheese. Mm. Now we're going to take two egg yolks and we're going to add that into the cheese sauce. Mustard sauce. English mustard. And this is Madeira. Classically, you'd use a nail or a stout. I just love the sweetness in the background. And now for the fried egg. One of the most passionate things I've ever seen done on television when it comes to cookery, and it was Albert Roux. Cooking a fried egg with so much passion and enjoyment was extraordinary. And you can say it's just a fried egg, but it's what you do with it and how you treat it. I want to get the butter foaming, because I'm going to use a little bit of the butter around the plate. The reason why I'm doing it in this little pan is I want the egg, the fried eggs, to stay nice and round. Just leave that on a low heat. This is the cheese sauce with all the other bits and pieces. It's a bit more than my mum's cheese on toast. <laughs> Over the grill. Again, it's very quick. Here he comes. To finish the fried egg. Hey. Hey. Here we have our buck rabbit. You can have the one without the egg. <laughs> I knew you'd say that. Mm. This is my new luxury breakfast at the weekends. This is an amazing dish on its own. I, I hope our chefs can do it some justice. It's going to be an interesting challenge for them. It's going to be a fantastic eating challenge if they manage this, because this is cracking, Marcus. You could do this professionally if you set your mind to it. <laughs> <laughs> Should we get the chefs in, see what they can do? Let's get them in. First up is Darren, who works in development for a global food brand. This is my first development chef job. I develop new recipes from everything from soup through chutneys to sauces and salad dressings. I work closely with a team of food technologists who take my recipes and then turn them into factory recipes. 
some days I could be making a budget soup and then the next day I could be cooking a fine dining meal for really important guests. The reason I took a job was to spend more time with my family and it's, it's Monday to Friday 9 to 5 so it, it's probably a perfect balance. Being a chef, it, it's just fantastic. Sticking on your whites in the morning and walking past the rest of the people into the kitchen with a big swagger on it, it's, it's fantastic, it's just, I just love it. I think Marcus, Monica and Greg can expect a couple of little surprises from me, yeah. OK, Darren, I would like you to make us a buck rabbit. OK. You know what that is? No. <laughs> it's a Welsh rabbit. Welsh rabbit. With a fried egg on top. OK. You all right with that? I'll be OK with that, I think. OK. One buck rabbit, 15 minutes, off you go. Yourself comfortable. <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you work for a removals company? No, but I might after this. Seven and a half minutes left. Is it warming up? It's taking forever. I might be quicker under the salamander, I think. It's not my bread, I promise. You've got five minutes left. Stop throwing it about. You want for a painter and decorator as well as a removal van. Uh, and a comedian. Oh, I don't know about that. It's far too hot, I need to start that again. You're alright though, you've got time. Just. Is it against the rules to ask Monica or Marcus to look after my egg? Yeah, <laughs> it is. Why wouldn't you ask me? Sixty seconds to cook that egg and get it on the toast. Come on. Thirty seconds. Is this the most stressful egg you've encountered? I must say it probably is, yes. Right, five seconds. I'd get it on the toast if I were you. Get it on. Get, oh. All right, all right. How about an upside down egg? Time's, time's, up. Time's, up. time's up. Time's up. You've delivered a buck rabbit, that you have, but big errors for me was the dry toast. There was some oil there and some garlic to moisten the bread. You've most certainly got the tang of cheddar. I can get a hint of mustard. Unfortunately, I can't pick up any Worcestershire sauce at all. And um, it's, it's pleasant without being wonderful. Um, great attempt, but we want fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. I was really quite surprised to see Marcus, and it set me back a little bit because I'd mentally prepared for Monica. Um, so it was just sort of like a snowball effect, I guess. Next into the kitchen is sous chef Alex. I'm sous chef in Five Star Country House Hotel in Persia. I've worked in varied one Michelin star restaurant, uh, three Michelin stars in Paris, Singapore. Working in Michelin star restaurants very demanding, but I enjoy it. And that's the kind of level I want to be at. And I want to see if I can pit my wits against the, the best chefs that are out there. In the future, I would love to have a family restaurant me and my wife and our four kids. Just me and my, my little team in the kitchen, that would be perfect, yeah. <laughs> Alex, I'd like you to cook us a buck rabbit. OK. Do you know what that is? It's like Welsh rabbit, yeah. It's a Welsh rabbit with a fried egg on top. All right, OK. This is my breakfast, all right? OK. Don't right. mess it up, chef. 
15 minutes, Alex. Off you go. Okay. You don't seem nervous either. I don't know, I just find it easy, easy to switch off. I suppose with four kids, five dogs and a wife, it's a lot of practice, I should imagine. <laughs> You're halfway, Alex. You've changed your mind. What are yeah, you going to do now? Just going to glaze the uh, rear bit first. I didn't want the egg to overcook. You've got five minutes left, all right? So there's enough time, but just. Got two minutes to go, Alex. What have you done to my egg? All done, Chef? All done. Alex, I thought it was going really well at first. It tastes like egg on toast. <laughs> it really does. There's, there's not enough sauce there. What I'm looking for is a big, bold flavour underneath the fried eggs. So, for me, yes, you've delivered the book rabbit, but it's not been delivered to the standard that I was looking for. I think we'd all like to see a bit of love and passion in you, Alex, all right? Yeah. Another round to show it. See you Thank again. Thank you very much. Thanks, Alex. Thank, Thank you. you. I'd presented it a bit better, but I, could, I didn't do it as, as good as I could have, you know. The next round, I'm just going to give him it all. Last to face Marcus is 28-year-old London chef de partie, Anthony. I work in a uh, one Michelin star uh, establishment in London. I work on the fish section. The food I personally like to cook is a mixture between sweet and savoury combinations that you wouldn't necessarily think of, a cucumber sorbet or a red onion ice cream. That's what really excites me about cooking. I'm ready for the uh, competition because I enjoy working in high pressure situations and I enjoy the pressure in the kitchen. The standards and the competitions I've seen before are very high, but I think I could do better. Have a look at this lot. This doesn't look bad, does it, for a skills test? No, cheese on toast. <laughs> Anthony? Uh, I would like you to make us a buck rabbit. OK. 15 minutes, off you go. Lovely. Anthony, you made a Welsh rabbit before? Uh, quite a while ago when I was working in a pub. You remember how it's done? Uh, I hope so. You're halfway. What's happened there, Anthony? Just cracked the yolk. Have you got another small pan? No. no. You've got five minutes left. Mm. 
I've never seen that in my life. We have three minutes. What's happened? Just burnt the toast. Burnt the toast. It's all happening, isn't it? Yeah. You've got a minute left. Yes. You've got 30 seconds. The Get it on a plate. The egg's not going to be ready. Sure. I wouldn't like to say that. No. You've still got 30 seconds. Right, 10 seconds. Is that ready to get out? Let's get it on. OK. Right, time's up. The egg was for me was the the big surprise. I've never seen an egg fried in a in a, in a pan before. No. I mean that's a first for me, and I've seen a lot in the kitchen. <laughs> Your cheese sauce has got a lovely tang to it. There's a slight sweetness to it and sharpness, and it's well seasoned. However, that's not toast. It's not cooked. It's a piece of bread. It is a shame because that's possibly the nicest of the, of the cheese sauce that I've tried so far. Thank you. I can taste the mustard and the Worcester sauce through it, um, but it's on soggy bread. It's not <laughs> toasted, Anthony. Yes. All right, one more round to go yet. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, I found that a little bit horrible, to be honest. <laughs> Leading up to it, I wasn't very nervous, but as soon as I got in there, Nerves got the best of me. Marcus, we've seen the chefs with your skills test. Uh, now it's your turn, Monica. What are you going to get them to do? I would like my guys to do a very straightforward butchery skills test. They have a whole rabbit. I'd like it jointed into five, prepared for cooking. The saddle, I'm going to bone out completely and stuff it. And the same with the back thigh. Butchering a rabbit is not something that they do every day. It's the boning and the stuffing that's going to be the interesting side. Right, 15 minutes, you and the rabbit, off you go. First thing, you have the joint of the thigh, which is here. It comes to the saddle. Very simply, you're going to cut through that. The legs, so very simply, cutting through this. We have the saddle here. So you can feel the ribs go one, two, and cut through. So repeat on the other side, and then you're just going to cut straight through. Okay. And there we have the saddle. So you have the two front legs here. The problems we have nowadays is a lot of what we can buy in is already prepared. Then I would always expect a young chef to find somewhere where he can learn that butchery. I think it's almost wrong that a chef attempts to cook something if he doesn't know how it's broken down. We've removed the front legs, back legs and saddle. And now you're going to stuff a saddle, stuff a leg. Start with boning up the, the back leg. So what you'll find is, is a bone down here, which is called the, the H bone. OK, so you can see it's there. You want to remove that. You can't get to this thigh bone until you remove the H bone. That's it. And then you want to go through. We don't want them to cut through the side of the leg. This may be a rabbit. But the principle of what Monica's doing applies to a chicken, a leg of lamb. Leg of lamb. The bone is broken off, but what happens is there's a piece of knuckle there which you do want to remove. We've got some mince here. Fill up that cavity. OK, we've got some creponet here. What is the creponet? The creponet is the lining of the, the stomach. And as soon as you cook that, this will melt away, but it will hold it together. And then you would just wrap that. That is ready to cook. Lovely. The next thing you're going to do is bone up the saddle of rabbit. We want to remove the rib cage and the backbone, leaving the whole piece of meat intact. It's, it's about following the natural seam and, and where the meat meets the bone. This is the real point now where you want to see the chef taking their time, making sure that they're not tearing the meat and that it becomes off in one piece without any holes. 
this is what you want. Yeah. And you're gonna overlap and hold it with the belly here. Mm -hmm. So there we have it. The stuffed saddle, the boned out and stuffed thigh, and two legs and the back thigh. That looks tricky to me. I think if they've never seen or worked on a whole rabbit before, they need to look at it as breaking it down into five parts, and I think it's very self-explanatory. Well, we've got three very nervous chefs. Let's see what they can do with this rabbit. I've got a feeling they might be even more nervous when we get them in here. Let's see what they can do. First to face Monica's test is Angela, an English teacher turned private chef. I work for a variety of companies, private clients, the scope of what I do can vary from anything like a Midsummer Night's Dream type party with edible flowers and beautiful pea shoots to Indian banquets for 200. So it really is very varied. I think I've always been in a very foodie environment. My family are beef and, and sheep farmers and my dad makes wine. I love my job and that's a really, really special thing to have. So you've worked with rabbit before, Angela? Yes, I have, yeah. Happy with butchery? Yes, I am. Good, good, good. What I would like you to do is to join it into five. OK. I then would like you to bone out one of the back legs and stuff it. OK. And also to bone out the saddle, roll and stuff. Brilliant. Right, Angela, Excellent. you have 15 minutes. Excellent. Off you go. Stop shaking. I know, right? It's terrible. Okay? Fine, still shaking, but fine. I probably need that for rolling. That would really have helped, wouldn't it? Mm. Sorry, please give me a second. Um, That's all right. Just remember you are up yeah, against the clock. Don't, 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 don't take too much time. Sorry. Hi, Angela. Yeah, I think I've gone through the skin, which is unfortunate. And I'm shaking like a leaf as well. Apart from those two catastrophic <laughs> from things. From those two slightly catastrophic things. It's I'm, okay. I'm okay. We've got a leg to do, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Last minute. Last mean, minute? Yeah, I don't think you're going to get this done, are you? I'll give it a go. Ten seconds. Right. Say that again. <laughs> I don't think I can. Let's just right, see. time's up. Stop. That's it. All done. Yeah. Angela, how was that? Um, I was surprised how nervous I was. I, I was, was surprised. surprised. You removed the legs off without a, a, a problem. Great to see that you retained the majority of, of the, the meat around the side. I think the saddle, uh, I thought you took your time about it and eventually got it off. Yes, there were bits of uh, nips along the middle, but you still kept it as intact as possible. But I am pleased that because you ran out of time, you left the joint of the top bit of the leg there, which is what you want to see. So you do have five decent pieces here, and I think a really great effort. Oh, thank you so much. Angela, thank you. Off you go. Thank you thank very you much. much. Um, that was unexpectedly nerve-wracking. You know, once you start questioning, like, one thing, like, all the other questions just start coming out, so you kind of just question everything. And then your ability, you're like, oh, my gosh, am I doing this right? Do I remember how to do this right? Is this a leg? I don't know. No, I know it's a leg. Next is Danilo, who is the head chef at the Italian Embassy in London. I cook basically for the ambassador and his family but we do also organize lunch for five or dinner for 100. Well, the food in the Italian embassy, of course, is Italian food. I always try to have a personal touch. We can call it modern Italian. I want to prove that simple cooking can be impressive without too much showing off. My mother and my father, they used to work in restaurant business and they were the first to tell me, don't do it. 
when you said to a child, don't do that, he's going to do it. it. Was either being a chef or being a rock star, and the rock star didn't work. So, here I am. Danilo, you have 15 minutes, off you go. so sure how to proceed with the saddle. I'll do the tie first. What are you doing now? Try to debone the tie first. Watch what you're doing. Yeah. The ambassador family doesn't like rabbit. Well, this is all his fault if it goes wrong then. <laughs> Right. This is the thing that's been worrying you. You've put yeah. it off till last, but you've got to do it. Yeah. Five minutes left. Thank you. Cinque minuti. Come on. I know I can do better than this. Nah. It's broken. It doesn't look really great. It was awful, really. I do my own butchery and this is not how it's supposed to be. You do your own butchery? Yeah. Hmm. The thigh which you've, you've boned out completely is just not right and it, it looks terrible. The saddle, you eventually worked it out, but had split down the middle. Yeah. The crepe neck could have saved that. If you're going to use a string, you need to tie properly. I mean, look, it's still going to seep out at the, at the end here. This has been a struggle for you. In the next round, you get a chance to cook your own food. Make sure it's good. Yeah, I'll do it. Squisito. Thank you. Yeah, squisito. Thanks. It was terrible, awful. One of the worst experiences. I can't do better than that. It's just how rushing into it and I did big mistakes. Last to take on Monica's test is Polish-born junior sous chef Bartosz. I'm working at a conference center in Buckinghamshire, focusing on modern European cuisine, and sometimes we would add some Asian influence as well. I become a chef because of my grandma and my mom, when I was a little guy, I almost had this like, magnet going to the kitchen and watching them and putting my little fingers to, you know, bread dough. I have this very rare talent where once I see something, I can develop it to different levels. Once I touch something, the magic happens and, you know, I can create some amazing things. So. Looking good? Happy with that? Never done rabbit in my life. Oh. I have never even eaten rabbit in my life. You've never eaten nope. a rabbit? Nope. Bartosz, you've done some butchery before, haven't you? I have in the past, yeah. It is straightforward. It's got two back legs, two front legs and a saddle. Pretty much like a lot of other pieces of meat. OK? Yep. Right, 15 minutes, off you go. Feeling for the joint, are you? Something like that, yeah. I have never done rabbit in my life, but. Three minutes to bone and stuff that thigh. Time's up. You finished? Yep. Batosh, you clearly did struggle at 
at certain points of this challenge. I wanted you to keep that beautiful saddle lovely and whole. You tr went on to remove the actual loins. The thigh which you've boned out, you've butterflied it to this long sort of faggot here. Yeah, you could use this, but it's not prepared to the quality yeah. that I wanted. I really liked your approach. You took your time, you were feeling your way around it, you cared about it. If you've never seen it, eaten it or butchered it before, I think you've done a good job. Are you making rabbit in the next round? <laughs> no. I'm not, no. Off you go. Thank you. Thank you. It was, it was hard. And yeah, but I just kept going and yeah, it is what it is. But I should probably train in butchery a little bit more. Well, now we've seen these six for the first time, I think it's all to play for. There's nobody here I would write off. I agree. There's not one that you think, this one stands head and shoulders. They've all delivered on a very similar level. I think the three chefs that did Marcus's test showed quite a bit of competence. They all knew what a Welsh rare bit was. Well, it's quite interesting. The fried egg and the toast is the bit that threw them. Yeah. It's amazing. They all <laughs> made a roux, all <laughs> made a cheese sauce, all struggled with a fried egg and a piece of toast. That's amazing. Monica, your skills test, the rabbit test, all three of them had competent knife skills and actually managed to do it, which I think is impressive. I mean, everything now depends on how well they cook their own signature dish. Everything. Welcome back to the MasterChef Kitchen. Right now, everything is up for grabs. Skills test is done, dusted. Now this dish is about you. This is your signature, something you've been thinking about. I hope you've tested it, and I hope it's a good one. Chefs, we will lose three of you at the end of this. Hour and 15 minutes to really showcase your talent. I'm looking forward to this. Off you go. I don't think the judges have seen me at my best yet, but I'm hoping I get to change the judge's opinion by getting my head down and just focusing on my dish um, and wowing them with how good it is at the end. Wow, you're putting a lot more effort into this than you did the skills test. <laughs> What's going on? I'm making sure I'm not making any silly mistakes like I did in the skills test. Good to hear. Where does your love of food come from? As a child, my dad was a fisherman, so we were... Um, we were exposed to some really, really nice stuff, so we were eating halibut and monkfish tails and things like that. Darren, what are you making for us today? So Scotch langoustines with uh, langoustine tortellini, a bisque made from the shells and some nice summer vegetables and a bit of crisp ham as well. Why this dish for us today? It just really describes what my cooking is like, I think. Good, clean flavours, simple, but use nice local produce and just let the produce do the talking, really. Is there anything here that you're worried about? Anything too technical? No, I just need to crack on. Darren's using Scottish longestines. He's going to be making them into a tortellini. He's also going to pan fry a couple of them as well. And he's going to be serving those with peas, broad beans and asparagus. Very simple sounding dish, but as Darren said, this is about using top quality Scottish ingredients. I think Darren knows what he's doing. If his bisque really gets intense flavour and threat, this could be a stunning dish from Darren. I can't quite believe that I'm here. I think that's probably why I had such a like nervous breakdown when I went into the skills test. Hopefully I can put the nerves away and perform much better. Angela, have your hands stopped shaking? They have. What's your signature dish? A pan-seared cannon of lamb served with a burnt aubergine puree, caramelised griot onion and then a parsley and pomegranate sumac and red onion salad. You've got another bit of lamb you've cut off though as well as the cannon? Yes, that's... oh yeah some really delicious crispy lamb bacon, essentially, I suppose. You've got a lot to do. I do have quite a lot to do, yeah. And have you done this dish in the time? I have, yeah. I've, I've time-checked time it twice. 
I love lamb. The most important thing about lamb is making sure that it's served beautiful and pink. She's also going to take the braise and deep fry it, and she's going to turn it into lamb crackling, which is great. The braising sauce, you're going to use that as her sauce for the dish. I want some amazing cooking here. It's all going to be in the detail on how well she cooks that lamb. And of course, the balance of the sumac, aubergine, and molasses. It's an hour left. An hour. After the skills test, I don't think I'm at the top position at all, but uh, I just have to push on and prove that I can, I'm a lot better chef than that. If I get the dish right today, the judges are going to love it. Anthony, what are you making for us today? I'm going to be doing a smoked duck breast, bone marrow, pickled vegetables, dandelion honey and honeycomb. Whoa! Where has this style come from, Anthony? It's my sort of style. I like someone sitting down, ordering something that they wouldn't usually order and then really enjoying it. Is it a style of food similar to what you're working or is this no, just you? this is me. If you're different, you show out from the rest, so... But you want to be different for the right reasons? For the right reasons. Anthony? Yes? I'm very intrigued with a slight bit of concern. Hopefully you enjoy it. Anthony is using duck breast. He's going to render the fat down to get it nice and crispy and he's going to be lightly smoking it in hickory. And the first for me, never ever eaten honeycomb at all with a duck breast, so this is going to be really interesting. Anthony is also adding pan-fried bone marrow to a duck, which already has a lot of fat on its own. Taking a risk at this point sometimes <laughs> is too dangerous. We want to see solid cooking from him. Judges think that probably I'm not fully trained. I don't know. That scares me a lot. I'm planning to change their mind, uh, showing what my really food is. I mean, that's what I'm here for. Danilo, how are uh, you feeling? Good. A bit nervous. This is your signature dish, so what we're looking for is confidence when it's your own food. <laughs> yeah, 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 I know. But it's a food for you, so. Oh, don't worry about us. So, what are you cooking for us? I'm going to cook in a plate of pasta. Uh, they are burrata ravioli, served with langoustine and scallops, and an uh, infusion made of asparagus and lemongrass, which I'm going to smoke with some uh, smoky Earl Grey tea. Does the stock got any consistency to it, or is it, is it got no, some butter? No, no, it's a, it's a... Just a broth? Yeah. Broth. It has to be really light. Ah, OK. It sounds much more complicated to me than a bowl of pasta. Well, yeah. Well, I can't come here with a bowl of pasta. But you just took the words out of my mouth. Yeah. yeah. Do you cook this for the ambassador? I do cook this for the ambassador. It was um, a little bit different. This is like a new version of another dish. You want to test yourself, don't you? Yes. Danilo is making us a pasta dish. He's done a, a tricola of squid ink, normal pasta and parsley. He's filling it with a burrata filling, which I personally love. It's a bit like mozzarella. Danilo is serving his pasta dish with an asparagus, lemongrass and smoked Earl Grey tea broth. Now I'm curious, he's got my attention. But as you know as well as I do, Monica, broth has to taste of what it says it is. I want to taste all of those things and I want to taste a great balance. Guys, 20 minutes left. I'm desperate to show the judges that uh, I deserve to be here and uh, that I can uh, cook amazing food. Alex, you seem very calm. Are you always calm like this? Uh, yeah, I was, my wife would disagree, but uh, <laughs> yeah, usually I am, yeah. We wanted love and passion from you, didn't we? Are we going to yeah. get it? Yes, you are. Yeah. Tell me how. Sea trout with pea puree, uh, glazed asparagus, and uh, brown shrimp, bernazette. What are you trying to say in this dish? Well, firstly, I can cook. and uh, It's a good message the, to start. Uh, and uh, I'm good with flavours, yeah. How keen are you to get a quarter-final place, Alex? Very keen, yeah. You're up Very for a keen, fight? Yeah. yeah. Alex is cooking sea trout. This is a fish you want to keep lovely and pink. You don't want to overcook it and season really well. Alex is serving it with Jersey Royals, peas, tomato con casse, asparagus, all the garnishes that you'd expect would work with sea trout. I suppose what I'm looking for here is great fish cookery, the most important part about it for me. You have 15 minutes left, that's it. I am very excited to cook my own food and show how good I am, really. As simple as that. 
Bartosz, your last 10 minutes you've had your hands on your hips. <laughs> it's not normal. What's happening? I'm calm because I'm cooking my own dish, so you know I'm, I know what I'm doing. I got some nice place. It's going to be coated in Greek yogurt and almonds. And I got some parsnip and leek fricassee. And I'm doing almond bernoisette as well. Have you had yogurt and nuts on fish? <laughs> no, I've never had not yogurt with fish. No, neither have I. It's really nice. Where, where does it come from? Is it your invention? It is, it is. Greek yogurt, it doesn't dry the fish, so it's nice and moist inside and crispy outside. Bartosz, I'm intrigued. Okay. I can't wait. I can't wait too. Thank Good you. Good luck. I've never had yogurt fish before. <laughs> Saying it sounds wrong. Bartosz is using place. He's going to panne it in flour, Greek yogurt in place of the eggs and almonds. Bartosz, he's not pushing himself, but if he's in time and he deserves a great dish, he can stand around as much as he likes for me. If he puts on an average dish, the question you and I are going to be asking ourselves is why didn't he do more? Why didn't he push himself? Five minutes. That's it, stop! Time's up. That's very pretty. Thank you. I hope it tastes nice as well. I'm sure it will. I'm definitely going for Scottish portions. Eh? His is a main course, mine's a main course as well, but yeah, I'm definitely going for... a little main course. Uh, Scottish portions, eh? Danilo, up you come, please. First up is Danilo. He has made a tricolor tortellini filled with burrata, accompanied by pan-fried langoustine, scallops and courgettes, blanched asparagus, broad beans, and a tomato con cas. It is served with a smoked asparagus, lemongrass, and Earl Grey infused broth. Danilo, once you put the stock onto the onto the dish, it really did bring it to life. And all the different colours of it, it just looks like spring on a plate. It looks fantastic. Thank you very much, Chef. Right. Let's get in there. You've got some amazing ingredients in this dish. A beautiful tortellini. The scallop is beautifully cooked. The longest in are well cooked. The vegetables have got textures of soft tomato. They've got the crunchiness of the beans and the asparagus. So many things are right about this dish. Unfortunately, your stock is so bland. The thing I was really looking for was the tea. Is that in there? Did you, yeah. put, did you put it in? Yeah, yeah. You didn't put enough in. Yeah. So just put more in. <laughs> Simple. <laughs> I'll do it. For me, I can taste the tea and the lemongrass in there. On its own, it's very, very light. We don't want a light broth because with everything in this bowl, it becomes washed out. But I love the idea of this plate and I think some great, great techniques at hand here. This, I think, is a work in progress, although it does show a real degree of skill. Thank you very much. Thank you, my friend. Grazie mille. <laughs> The broth is the easiest part of that dish, and I should have done better. I don't know if I've done enough to keep myself in the competition, but I think I'll give it a good try. Angela, would you bring your food up here, please, chef? Angela's cannon of lamb is served with lamb belly crackling a burnt aubergine puree, a parsley puree with goat's curd, a red onion salad dressed with pomegranate molasses and sumac, and a lamb sauce. Angela, I do like the crispy lamb belly. You've really intensified the, the flavor of the sauce. The lamb is lovely and pink. 
However, I find it's lacking in seasoning. It's a nice plate of food, but I don't want nice. I want knockout, wow, best lamb dish I've had, Angela. Okay. I'm getting flavour from goat's cheese. I'm getting flavour from your sauce. Not enough from the aubergine. Mm -hmm. Not enough from the lamb. I just want to see you chuck a bucket of flavour over this. Okay. I actually like the dish. The lamb's beautifully cooked, the crackling was delicious. Parsley adds a bit of freshness to the dish that I actually quite like. You've just let yourself down on the finer details of the sauce. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. The feedback was very mixed, probably like a three-way split, to be honest. I don't know how it's going to pan out. <laughs> kind of in limbo. Nervous limbo. <laughs> Anthony has made smoked duck breast with pickled vegetables, fried bone marrow, and honeycomb. It is garnished with nasturtium leaves, carrot tops, wood sorrel, and dill, and served with a drizzle dandelion honey. There's a smack of Alice in Wonderland about your plate. Uh, I really like it. It's like a piece of art. Yes, it's colourful, but there are certain things on there that I'm, I'm a little bit concerned about. Um, this dish does not work at all. Um, it is just a plate of honey. I've got some textures in my mouth from the raw vegetables. Can't taste the duck, but it's overcooked anyway. Uh, and the bone marrow really is just a non-event, it doesn't taste of anything. This is possibly one of the sweetest duck dishes I've, I've had, and this for me is style over substance. The fat of rich bone marrow into honey, I, I can't, it is uncomfortable for me. You're, you're trying here to rewrite the book. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. With the dish, I wanted to show uh, how creative I could be and how different I could be, but they didn't, they didn't get it. Darren has made langoustine tortellini, pan-fried langoustines and pea puree with blanched peas, asparagus and broad beans, dried pate negra ham, served with a langoustine bisque. Darren, that looks really lovely. You should be pleased with yourself. Thank you very much. Stunning. Thank you very much. Absolutely stunning. I'm digging deep to try and find some fault in this dish, um, and I can't. Texture, great. Flavours, superb. Execution, seasoning, balance, fantastic. Do you want me to continue? <laughs> Please do. Thank you very much. <laughs> very good. <laughs> Thank you. I'm very impressed with the amount of time that you've had uh, to get the flavours of the bisque into, into this sauce. Wonderful, really wonderful. I think it's a delightful eating dish. Thank you. I'll tell you as I see it as a customer, OK? I think it's absolutely delightful. That is a Greg, another guzzle of wine, finishing the sauce with my finger type dish. I love that. I hope you're not a one dish wonder. <laughs> so do I. Better not be. I won't. <laughs> I'd get out of here while it's going. Well, the going's good, if I was you. I'm going. Go I'm on. going. Well done, mate. Thank you. <laughs> good lad. Oh, that was beautiful. That's what you want to see. I'm feeling fantastic, so excited. I felt much more comfortable cooking my own food for the judges, so for them to really like it just makes me really proud. Alex's dish is pan-fried sea trout with a pea puree, glazed asparagus, capers, confit tomatoes, a potato galette and Jersey royals. It's served with a brown shrimp, bernoisette. The plate for me looks crowded. 
and a little greasy down the bottom there. I'm worried about my heart. Hmm. Alex, the fish, the skin is nice and crispy. It's seasoned really well, but it's overdone for me, which is a crucial part of, of this dish. I tell you what I love that you do, Alex, and that's flavour. I mean, you are big and bold with your flavour. Love the puree, love the asparagus, like the potatoes, everything. I just don't enjoy them all together. Alex, it, it reminds me of a piece of fish with about two, three, four side orders that have come with it. There's far, far too much going on. Thank you very much indeed. I feel absolutely gutted getting them sort of comments from Marcus. It's, uh, it's really disappointing, yeah. Bartosz has made pan-fried place coated in Greek yogurt and flaked almonds with parsnip, pea and asparagus fricassee and an almond burr noisette. The presentation is interesting. It's, it's, you know, it's unusual to see parsnip uh, on, on a dish that just sings out spring, but not a bad job. The yogurt and nut fish doesn't work for me. What I have tasted is so much nut. The fish is, is no longer evident. It's about the balance, and I think this is quite off for you today. This isn't just about a dish. We, especially Monica and I, we look at how the chefs work in the kitchen. We've got a lot of time, a lot of standing True. around, a lot of staring what else, what else is going on in the kitchen. And I think this dish really shows your almost, you know, it's almost like a lack of interest because all I can taste is nuts. I can't taste the place. I can't taste the yogurt. I can't taste any seasoning. I just have almonds in my mouth. I think you're going to have to go back and rethink this one. Thank you, my Thank friend. You. Thank you. Nice talking to you. I take a lot of positive from negative because this is something I can build on. So yeah, I'm actually happy, yeah. We have got so much to talk about. Can I ask you chefs to take a well-earned break? Thank you, off you go. Now they've cooked their signature dish, I think the errors are very obvious. I think at the same time, one or two are starting to show their strengths here. There was one chef who just got universal praise. Darren's beautiful longestine dish with the bisque, which was just sublime. That dish for me was absolutely brilliant. He goes through to the quarterfinal, right? Absolutely. Unanimous? No doubt. I think there's also one decision it's going to be easy for all three of us to make and that's Bartosz. I mean, almond and yoghurt coated place is a mistake, yep. a big mistake. Bartosz's competition is over. Yes. Danilo definitely shows a lot of potential here. The concept and the idea of the dish, mm. I think, was in a great beginning. Yes, I said the stock was under for me. Maybe I was being harsh. All the individual elements were beautifully cooked, fantastically executed and well seasoned. Monica, do you want to see Danilo go through? Mm hmm Yep. I really loved Anthony's presentation. He did the duck with the little pickled vegetables all rolled and little shaves of cauliflower. No, you, you no. Uh, Greg, there's so many things on this dish you don't do. Nothing on that plate that made sense. It was far too sweet. The duck was overcooked. <laughs> Sorry. When you start blowing raspberries, I know it's the end of the line for the chef. Anthony's gone. Yep. This means we have one quarterfinal place, mm. and that is going to go to either Angela or Alex. I was disappointed with the flavours on, on an Angela's dish, but what was very clear was that the lamb was lovely and pink, and this is very important. I liked the undercurrent of the dish. She didn't overdo it, and it was one of those dishes that we all had a different opinion about. If you actually look at the skill and what she delivered, I think it was excellent. It means a huge amount, I think, to, to stay in the competition. It's um, emotional. Yeah. 
unexpectedly so, I think. Alex, I thought, got flavour for his seasoning, but he overcooked that fish by quite a bit. There's a great combination of ingredients here. Uh, I just felt there was a little bit too much on the plate. Has Alex just overthought the dish and just tried to do too much? See if we go through or not. I don't know if I've done enough, but we'll see. It's obvious to me after eating the food and listening to your comments that both Alex and Angela have a great deal of experience. Mm. Who do you want to see cook again? I think I know. I know who I'd like to see again. Thank you for today. Whatever happens, whether you go or stay, you have to take on board the comments and learn and grow from them. We are taking three of you through to a quarter-final. Unfortunately, for three of you, your competition ends here. And the first chef leaving us is... Bartosz. Thank you. The second chef leaving the competition is... Anthony. Thank you. Thank you, Anthony. And our third chef leaving the competition is... Alex. Thank you. I'm a bit gutted, yeah. I guess when you don't pay attention to detail, you know, that happens, you know, so. I've learned today to deal with pressure a lot better and uh, probably rethink my style of cooking maybe a little bit. If I had one more chance, I would do a lot of things differently. But this is how you learn, you know, if you don't make mistakes, you don't learn. Oh, <laughs> Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. The feedback I got from the judges was amazing. Better than I could have hoped for. Uh, and, and I'm just made up. Yeah, I'm feeling, feeling great. Yeah. Really great experience. I'm feeling fantastic. Today was an awesome day. I suppose now in hindsight of being quite nice, it feels pretty good. Next time, another six professionals fight for a place in the quarter final. That's a disaster. Did I enjoy it? No, I didn't. Would I try it again? No, I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs>